You are now listening to Carly's Couch. I'm Carly. And I'm Lex. In this podcast, we discuss a wide array of topics about life and how to live your best life. Whatever that looks like for you. (laughs) Hope y'all enjoy. Feeling overwhelmed may not be a conscious choice, but this week on Carly's Couch, we talk about how we can deliberately choose to become more aware of our emotions and how they shape the quality of our lives. Another day, another convo about emotions. <laughs> In my head, I was like, another dollar? <laughs> <laughs> that too. Uh, how you doing, everybody? Thank you for joining us for Carly's Couch. We hope you've been enjoying the last few episodes. Um, we've been trying to get some more guests in here because that way we can kind of learn something too from other people who are experts. Um, so thank you all for listening. How you doing, Carly? Man, I'm doing pretty wonderful today. <laughs> you start it every time. Man. I got to think about it. <laughs> um, I actually taught a yoga workshop this morning. I was just telling Lexi. And I feel like it was the best yoga class I've ever taught in my life. And I know that you're not supposed to, like, compare in yoga and stuff. But I just felt, like, so aligned and grounded. Like, just in the moment, I was like, wow, this is it. Like, the music peaked at the right time. Like, just the words that were coming out of my mouth. Because I don't pre-plan classes. Like, it just was so nice. So I'm feeling, like, real floaty today. That's good. It was the best class for you or, like, based on how you felt coming out of it? Um, that and the feedback from the class mm-hmm. was amazing. I, mm-hmm. I think just the moment was so intentional and everybody came into the space just open and like willing to receive. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like a beautiful, like amalgamation of everything. I can imagine you probably felt like in flow and that's what feels good about it. Um, but for somebody who does that all the time, I'm surprised that, you know, this will be your best one, but also hopefully there's something you can take away from all of that to like recreate it again. Um, is it maybe also partly because you you haven't been teaching in a while, have you? Mm -mm, Exactly. Yeah, you've been gone and maybe um, taking a break from things. Sometimes, like, when you come back, you're, like, not thinking that hard about it. I actually had uh, my tennis coach got on me the other day about this. I was like, well, I haven't been here in a month because of all the rain. Um, And he was like, this is your best game of tennis ever. (laughs) And I was like, hmm, I wonder why. And he was like, you know, if you're not thinking about it, all you have is, like, just your straight muscle memory, what you know, and, like, you're not thinking, as in, like, every other day you go and you're, like, you know, thinking too hard sometimes. So, um, I don't know, maybe those breaks can be good because you come back and it's, like, just just straight up clear. Yeah, I was about to say, and then today's theme was about being renewed and refreshed. And so, um, you know, it just, everything was in alignment. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling it. But I do think having a break and not teaching yoga all the time or feeling forced to do it, like, allows me to create from a place of, like, I want to do this instead of, like, I have to. And that always feels better for me. Oh, so this wasn't, like, a class you had to teach. Oh, you were, oh good. Yeah, yeah, optional. That's always different, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's always different, too. Um Leave us comments, please, uh, and also leave us reviews. I was checking on iTunes. Let me know also if you listen to iTunes or um, uh, what's the other one, Spotify, Spotify. Um, or what platform you tend to listen more. I kind of assume people listen on Apple more, but that's just where I listen. Um, But I haven't seen any new reviews in a long time, so I'd love for you to leave a review, even if you've left them before, and or just share the podcast episode with somebody else who – or the podcast in general, like, oh, you might like this podcast to listen to um, and encourage them to leave a review if they like it or to let you know how they like it as well. Yeah, I was about to say, I saw a lot of um, people sharing. We had Will Medley on last week, and I saw a lot of people sharing Will's, mm-hmm. and um, he was dropping some good gems. So I think it's also cool to get into new audiences as we bring different people on the podcast who might not know about us or, you know, listen to this type of podcast mm-hmm. in general. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, we had some comments from the homie Nanero from a couple episodes ago. Do we want to go through, read those? Yeah, um, about grief. Um, Mm -hmm. well, so first she said, side note, would love to see an episode with a funeral director because I mentioned that, like, we need to know, you know, our parents are getting up there, life is lifing, and even in ourselves. Yeah, planning, like, what are the things that you need Mm -hmm. to have done? What are the simple steps you can take now to, like, alleviate a lot of the stress and chaos that happens after someone passes, like for your Mm -hmm. family, even, even though we're, you know, in our thirties and we out here in our, you know, ripe and prime and all that jazz, like life really happens. And so Mm -hmm. we will be having someone on, I'm not sure when, but then she has some comments about grief. 
Um, and she said that something I learned recently is that grief is, is like, I don't see grief as grief unless, unless it is a blatant loss of a person, like a loved one or relationship. But someone pointed out to me that I've really been mm. grieving the loss of support I've been experiencing through a new manager who was really not that great. And it's felt weird to experience grief in a way that wasn't something I would have typically identified it as. Mm. That is interesting. Actually. Um, we talked in the episode about how grief is a loss in general, and with work being such a huge part of our lives, especially in America, um, that makes sense. If something changes with work, then that could be a big loss or that could be something that very much impacts you um, with something you have to do every day or something you may be used to and no longer have um, in that form of support. So thank you for that um, additional insight. Yeah, we appreciate you. Um, yeah, leave us comments because we write back. <laughs> and um, also, if you leave questions about ideas for episodes or questions for us to ponder during an episode, we do those too. So hit us at Carly's Couch on all the platforms. Let us know. But today we are, um, as Carly said at the beginning, talking about being overwhelmed, um, being in a state of overwhelmed, um, just feeling like there's just so much going on, right? And everybody, I think, deals with that differently. Everybody, I think, may even define being overwhelmed a little bit differently. Um, so I will start by asking Carly, what does it mean to you to be overwhelmed? What are your thoughts on what that means? Um, to be overwhelmed means feeling helpless. Like there's just so much going on that you don't know where to start. You don't know where to stop. Mm -hmm. You feel like you can't, like something is like cascading downhill and you don't just, you don't know how to stop it or slow it down to where you feel like you in control. So maybe being overwhelmed is feeling out of control. Hmm. Okay. I can see that. I would say um, feeling overwhelmed for me is having, just feeling like there's just so many tasks at hand and you are not clearly seeing like the route through completing all of it and getting everything done. Um, and especially as a business owner that can yeah. include like your, you know, things you may have to be doing for work with and within work, it's like uh, clients, there's internal stuff, biz dev, there's dealing with your team. Um, there's maybe like sales, account management, all of those things and all of those things. And, your personal life, which may be your friendships, your relationships, your family um, going out, and your personal life of things that you have to take care of, like you're paying your bills on time or taking things to the dry cleaners, um, getting your car fixed. Um, there's literally like five zillion things, right, at all times. Um, and so for me, that's kind of what it looks like when there's like all of those categories are also full of things, which they may, you know, there's always something in all of them at all times. But, you know, if it seems like everything is kind of priority and or it's just so much, it's hard to like arrange it um, in a way that makes sense for you or to feel like, oh, yeah, I got this. Um, that's what it feels like for me. It sounds like a lot of the stuff that you were mentioning um, is just like regular stress stuff, like stuff you that is kind of on your mm. plate at all times. Would you say that overwhelm and stress are synonymous? Mm. So I, I technically, um, so when I was looking at for some supportive um, information for this episode, um, I was using the term overwhelm, but then I there were lots of articles, right, that talk about um, stress as well, like when you're stressed. Uh, for me, I think about it, though, as I'm overwhelmed when my stress is at its peak um, because there's always stressors and not, you can always feel a little bit of stress, which there's still like chronic stress. But for me, just for the purpose of this episode, when I'm talking about feeling overwhelmed, um, and dealing with that, for me, that's when you're at like a peak level of stress. Um, when you're overwhelmed, like definitions, like when you look it up, we'll say like drowning or buried when a thing is technically overwhelmed, it's mm -hmm. taken over. Um, there's too much of it. And so that's the slight difference for me when I think about like those two terms. What about for you? Do they feel the same? I'm trying to think of what that line is where stress mm -hmm. becomes overwhelmed because we all carry like a certain level of stress every day, right? Because you'd like, be overwhelmed <laughs> by stress. But also yeah. if you were like, man, I'm extra stressed, then that could be you saying I'm overwhelmed. Right? It could be just different language Or like sometimes. I just think about days when, when things happen and it's like, okay, you know, I'm rolling with the punches, rolling with the punches, and then the mm -hmm. straw that broke the camel's back happens and all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's just like whoosh like a tidal wave of stuff, like kind of where that 
um, separate. So I would say that they're different. I could say that stress causes can cause overwhelm, like high levels of stress, Mm -hmm. unexpected things happening, things like that. Um, But they're not necessarily the same. Mm -hmm. And I think with both of these, and maybe we can like talk about this throughout, I think sometimes you don't know when you're stressed or maybe like you don't really exactly recognize it or you may not recognize when you're overwhelmed. But when we talk about some of the signs and the ways it can look in your life, I think those are the tells that you actually are. Because I think a lot of times we get to that point because we haven't stopped to be like, you know what, I'm a little, I'm stressed by this or, you know, something is affecting me or whatever until it gets to like a breaking point at times. Um, So when was the last time that you felt overwhelmed, if you can remember, and like, you know, how did you know, like, oh, this is a lot, and, like, what did you do? Um, two things came to mind. So the first one was whenever my mom passed, going back to the episode on mm-hmm. the funeral directors, it was just, like, a whirlwind of all this shit that I had to think through and deal with in mm-hmm. that moment that just got dumped in my lap. And I was like, well, God dog, okay, this is a whole thing. And I was just like, I didn't know where to start. And so you just kind of, like, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You just kind of got to do whatever you can do and get it done. But then more recently, I had a couple of big proposals because um, mm-hmm. I've been expanding the strategy and consulting part of my business. And I had like three proposals due in one week and I had just gotten back and, you know, back into the flow and trying to deal with grief and everything. And I just remember like feeling like like a little anxious in my heart, like, oh, I got to get all this stuff done. Mm-hmm. Feeling kind of pressure, like, um, like right before a tea kettle is about to like, explode and and tell you that it's boiling and that it's ready like that's how I felt Mm -hmm. yeah I can imagine I think that um the loss of a loved one is is probably one of the biggest like spaces where you can feel overwhelmed and that is in uh, some of the stuff I read like that can cause that right because I mean there's obviously all the things you have to do there's all the emotions you're dealing with all the people you're dealing with and so again it's like all these columns of just things to Um, be on your mind with this underlying whole thing of you know a person that I love is gone so that that I would definitely imagine probably a huge huge time of overwhelm and that consequently after that any and uh, I was going to say any little things but that's not necessarily little either like the stress of work and being like damn I got to keep going (laughs) um, and keep doing things and I can't just like stop and like chill completely um, can continue to like add on to that for sure um one of the first things I thought about it it seems completely pale in comparison to that but the only reason I'm calling it overwhelmed because now that I, I was thinking about it as you were talking it's like mm, there's a lot of like stressful things and I'm like I'm not sure if I would really call it overwhelmed but also to a degree I would say recently um maybe like a couple weeks ago I had um a proposal due as well and i I the reason why I'm struggling to call it overwhelm or why I'm I'm kind of thinking through it now is because I might have been overwhelmed because I literally didn't do it <laughs> and I I got to the point where I was like yeah I'm just not gonna do this and I just stopped and I was like I'm going to bed or I'm taking a nap or whatever right like I I went into avoidance mode and so because of the way I acted that makes me think I probably was overwhelmed mm-hmm. but it may again not have just been like it wasn't just that proposal because the proposal wasn't even hard like it was it was just something I I had to do. Um, and I had other things going on and I I feel like actually it was like a week of a week that I didn't work that hard, a week where I might've did like an hour or two for a few days in a row, knowing I had this coming and coming and coming and I didn't get to it and then got right to the day before. And it was like, Oh, this dude like, Oh, 2 PM Eastern time. No, it was like, um, 8 AM Eastern time. And I'm thinking like, Oh, I have that at least that morning I can wake up and maybe work on something. I was like, yeah, that ain't getting done. And I just stopped. And so perhaps I was probably, while that kind of signifies it to me, I was probably already overwhelmed because I already wasn't doing nothing that whole week. Like it was a lot of procrastination, a lot of, I'm just going to chill and be like, well, forget it. You know, I'm going to let what happens happen. Um, So I guess maybe that's the answer to like, how did I maybe know I was overwhelmed because I was already just in a complete state of like, I don't want to do nothing else right now. I can't really do anything else. Um, so I'm not even really sure maybe what caused it. And that also makes me think, well, maybe I do, do have like a chronic overwhelm or chronic stress. Um, if it's like every so often, it just kind of gets to that, right? Like for me, it's like waves of like, well, I have some energy and then it's like, yeah, I'm not doing really doing anything and I don't really care about the consequences. Um, so yeah, that's what happened for me. But I also, what I did about it, I feel like I just accepted it. I was like, yeah, this isn't going to get done. Like, that's okay. I have a few more other ones I could work on and get done. 
Um, I think I, I told myself, like, oh, maybe this one's not going to be, you know, not for me. But I think that's kind of like, you know, just saying some <laughs> justification <laughs> yeah, afterwards. Just saying something um, because, shoot, like, we definitely need some bread. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of, like, accepted it, um, was kind to myself about it, and moved on, and, like, just worried about the things, other things at hand. That's a beautiful way to to deal with yourself and to recognize because I imagine it probably hasn't always been like that or maybe maybe it has but I like that you gave what people might not perceive as a symptom of being overwhelmed so just like shutting down how we talked about in the nervous mm -hmm. episode how to regulate your nervous system episode a couple episodes ago and like how shutting down in the fawn response is being overwhelmed or stressed out like it's just like I'm so I got so much stuff to do I'm gonna take a nap or I got so much to do, I'm just going to shut down and do that. And so I think that that's a big sign if you do notice, like, patterns in your life where you find yourself shutting down and not doing things that normally feel easy to you or, um, like, avoiding sending an mm -hmm. email for two weeks. Like, that could be a sign, too. Yeah, and, like, you know it's easy, but you just, I don't know, you just, some, there's sometimes that I just, like, I just, I'm not doing this or I don't want to do it or, um, yeah, it's just not happening. So got to keep on moving. Um there are some signs, though, of overwhelm, and these are essentially are all the signs of being, like, extremely stressed or uh, dysregulated. And, and some of the things we've talked about recently, um, a few different kind of categories, kind of what I try to put them in. One is, of course, anxiety, anger, irritability. Um, so if you find yourself very irritable, if you find yourself very angry, um, then you may be dealing with overwhelm. And I have people, it's so funny because I, I have people tell me, or recently, in the last couple weeks, actually, um, I might go so, so far to say it's the day before yesterday. <laughs> like, uh, be like, damn, you have, you have, why are you so angry? And I was like, I got angry. I was like, I got anger problems, you think? <laughs> and like, yes, yeah, like, calm down. <laughs> You're doing too much. She's like, you be turning up too quick. And I'm like, I don't think I'll be turning up quick. Like, I'm not angry. I'm just, y'all getting me upset. Like, he's like, yes, <laughs> like, you're upset. Um, and then I had somebody a few weeks ago tell me, like, uh, so do you know what displaced anger is? And I was like, man, shut up. <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes I feel like you just kind of like turn up a little bit and it's not about me. <laughs> and I was like, all right. But I did. I also took all that and then I put it in my notes. So I was like, for the next therapy session, let me talk about this. <laughs> like, am I angry? Um, but then I um, have have somebody else in my life, a family member. Where I was like uh, with them, hanging out with them. And I was like, oh, you're extra angry. I was like, yeah, you're way angrier than me. So like, I was like, I get how it feels. It's like, why are you always snapping? Like, I'm just talking. You always snapping at me and like. Just it just feel like you just I can feel like you're upset or miserable or angry, um, and I was like I don't think I'm that bad. But also to see an example of it in somebody else is like, dang I really it kind of hurts. Like I feel like you you're you're going through something right because you're just at on the edge all the time, um, and I'm often on on edge. And I think because of the stressors and things I said earlier, it's just like always so much stuff. Um, so I don't know if it's just because of a thing or what, but. I'm going to explore that a little bit more myself. Yeah, I was about to say, I probably lean more towards, like, carrying a level of stress that I wasn't aware of. And I think about it because I was in my yoga teacher training, and we were doing poses, and teachers were coming around and making adjustments that we had agreed to. Mm -hmm. And then one of my teachers, like, put her hand on my back, and she was like, why are you so tense? And I'm like, what do you, this is, what do you mean? This is my regular body stance. And then, so ever since then, I've been a lot more conscious of like clenching my jaw or like having the little Arthur fist or relaxing mm -hmm. my shoulders down, like thinking about that. Um, but to what you said and going back to like feeling overwhelmed, I think that like it's, it is like that being on edge, like anytime that you feel yourself like lashing out, like the, your reaction to something happening is bigger than what said, like, um, whatever happened. So for example, mm -hmm. like someone kind of pulls out and all of a sudden it's like, blah, blah, blah. You start cussing and going crazy. And it's like, bro, it wasn't that serious. Like mm -hmm. what's going on? Or you, yeah, sometimes probably, that just feels good too. I think like I, sometimes I like turning up just cause if it's like you release. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, like I was telling my friend the other day, I was like, you know, I, I used to be like, yeah, I had a lot of aggression issues. Like when I was in college, I recognized it, which is why I, I took up rugby because like I needed a little outlet or I needed something to like, oh, I bet you were good at do. rugby. And I was a tackler. I was eight man. And so my whole goal was like run out of the scrum and like just tackle somebody. So I, um, I, I remember like even during the time, I was like, phew, like that's why I wanted to do it. Um, Cause it felt like there's always like some pent up stuff in me. Um, that's probably like a little I bit less now, like not the same way, but um, to a degree, I guess there's probably some of that. 
That's why I work out hard. People be like, what are you training for? Life. Okay, look, I have to exert. <laughs> hard I Bro, I be out here jumping around going crazy because I have to exert that energy. Like, otherwise, mm-hmm. I do feel it pent up. And I feel like, oh, I, I just have resigned that I am a person that needs to expend large amounts of energy sometimes. And that's mm-hmm. like a healthy outlet. So if you see me out here working out, that's mm-hmm. what's going on. I started um, screaming in the car the other day, too. Not, I, I said that real casual, but like, but like on purpose, I, I was think i was straight i don't even know what was going on but i just i was thinking about how like you know we how often do we get to like really be like as loud as you want to be and i was like you can't just be at the house and start screaming and i started mm-hmm. thinking about it and i was like i probably could do it in the car like while i'm in the highway and i was just like i just started screaming in the car and i was like that'd be feeling good like it does and that, and it literally was like an exercise like i said i wasn't like going through it per se but like it was like a good exercise of just like like really just like yell as loud as you can and like immediately just like i don't know it just felt good it felt if felt freeing um and i know some people like will scream in their pillow and stuff like that i just feel like i couldn't get as loud as i would want in the crib like that but um yeah try that too i must say that's very cathartic it reminds me there's actually a, um a car commercial where the lady was like screaming in her car <laughs> and like they like went in you could hear ah and then they went out Not the you sound could hear, yep. and it was like doing the in and out thing but i i do think that it's important to find outlets and so i'm like man i'm about to scream in my car on the way mm-hmm. home i like that mm-hmm. there's also a lot of um physical kind of symptoms of overwhelm um, your heart could be racing, uh, chest pains, dizziness, um, shortness of breath, things like that. Um, another thing, I um, listened to the School of Greatness the other day. He was talking to somebody about how, like, yeah, he always had this, like, ball in his chest, like, ball of something, like, kind of pressure in his chest. And it and it's triggered a memory because I was like, you know, I remember as a kid, I used to always think I was having, like, like, what's this little heart attack I was having? And it's so funny because I can't for the love of me think of, like, why would I have been having any, like, you know, whether it was maybe an anxiety or panic or something like that, like, why I was having that. But I very frequently would have, like, pain in my chest, like, like pain, pain. Um, and I would tell, I remember telling my parents about it, and they're like, well, what's going on? Or, And I remember, like, doing a lot of research in myself at a little bit older age and being like, maybe I have heartburn or, which actually I think I might have had too, but, like, um, I noticed, like, all through grad school, I would kind of research, try to figure it out. Um, and it directly, I mean, has to do with stress from, you know, being in school, and life, whatever. But that's something that I don't really experience anymore in that way. Um, so I think that probably over time, like, I'm perhaps um, dealing with stress a little bit more healthy or letting it out or whatever. Um, but that's something I, I distinctly remember, like, for years, like, most of my life, like, just having this, like, random pains in my chest. I've seen that manifest, like, as an adult. Like, I've had friends who do consulting or who do other things, like, think that they're having a heart attack, Mm -hmm. and it's a panic attack, Mm -hmm. essentially. And so that's what happens with their chronic stress from your job or from life or having kids, whatever's going on in your life. So pay attention to those things because it's usually your body, like, trying to say Mm -hmm. something. Yeah, and if you go back to, like, some of our first episodes, I remember talking about, like, I'd wake up like that, um, like, completely feeling anxiety and, like, why am I waking up and I can't breathe or my chest hurts? Um, And I don't really do that anymore either, so... Definitely something to recognize because you might be so used to it that you're not really, you know, thinking about it like, oh, that's not how it could be or should be. Um, And no, it is not. No. Another um, symptom of overwhelm, something that you might not think about is being very sensitive to external stimuli. So if there's like loud noises or really bright lights, um, if you find yourself just being very sensitive or I would say easily overwhelmed by like kind of things going on in your environment. That could be another sign. Too. Mm-hmm. Another one that applies um, very much to me is like, if you start feeling a strong need to like be alone to recharge, or if you kind of withdraw or need to isolate, um, that could be a sign that you're overwhelmed. Um, and s- kind of piggybacks off of what Carly just said is like, you just, like, you can't deal with all of this stuff. You can't deal with people right now. You can't deal with like, being out and about or conversations and you it's too much right so if you're overwhelmed you're already up here um and there's like nowhere else you can go so like I need to I need to sit down and like let everything kind of just calm down a little bit oh excuse me and also that kind of probably relates to like um for the folks who it's like you feel overwhelmed and it's like I just need to take a nap or you just need to like let me just go home and chill um and so all of that is kind of like a sign for that. Mm-hmm. If you're having trouble concentrating or focusing or being present, um, or if you you feel like a listlessness and like you're just not caring as much about what you normally care about or caring to be involved or doing things, like those could also be signs that you're overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And I think another huge one is um, crying. 
Um, and I'll just say, like, crying in general because there'll be times where um, there's just so much going on that, like, and maybe you've, like, just started crying. You're like, I don't even know why I'm crying. Um, I've been in, like, arguments before and just, like, start crying. I've, um, but I tend to do the thing where I'll, I'll start crying and I'll start laughing because I'm crying. Um, or if it's just, like, your your body is literally so overwhelmed, like, it just comes comes out as tears at times. So if you're a big crier, um, that may be a signal of overwhelm. I'm a big crier. It is a bit, it's a big release for me, kind of like screaming. Like sometimes I just need to cry and then I like feel better. Mm -hmm. Um, but to your point, it's usually when I reach like my, my pinnacle of stress or, or overwhelm that I'm like, I just have to release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like when I cry. Cause I'm like, Oh, it feels like, it's like, okay, I can cry. Like I can get everything out. But I was just talking, um, this past week, like talking to Tatiana about like how my emotions and, and all these things have changed over the last few years. I was like, I'll cry, you know, reading a book nowadays or like I was watching Cheers on the Plane, episode three, and I, my throat was lumped up. I was like, no, not <laughs> Cheers. I was crying on the plane. But like it feels good to me now to like cry because I'm like, oh, it feels so good to like feel. I'd be sounding like such a robot, but like it feels good to like feel <laughs> it feels and like good to feel. So, like let it out and all that. And I'm like, you know, I love like opportunity to like feel that um, now, even from like the smallest thing. Man, thinking about being overwhelmed, I remember um, just a distinct thing, but I've been doing this my whole life, like working out, like exerting lots of energy. But I know if I'm ever really going through something, I'm going to go work out so hard, and then that helps me release mm -hmm. my crying. Like for whatever reason, pushing myself, my body to like its physical limit, like allows me to reach that place sometimes when I can't cry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mentioned this earlier, but you can also be chronically overwhelmed. So um, if you are living in a... Um, state of like feeling dread, like you wake up kind of feeling dreadful, um, have a lot of indecision, scared to say no, find yourself rushing through a lot of things, procrastinating a lot, avoiding things. If that's like your day to day, uh, which as I was reading that sounds kind of like mine, but I don't, I don't feel that overwhelmed. Maybe I am though. Um, but maybe it's just been your state, so you're used yeah, to it. Yeah, which is that's the problem, right? So it's like actually going off of this list, it's like, well, I would definitely be chronically overwhelmed. Um, that paired with the fact that every time I put on my friends, um apple watch which i still been doing like the, literally the other day last time i did this maybe a week ago before i was traveling um my friends was like at 52 i put it on and mine was immediately like 75 and then it went to 95 in two seconds and i was like <laughs> like and i was like no why does it keep going up like 100 and i was like no i can't stop it from going up and like my body so quickly like turns up and i was like man it, like that really has to be some kind of a signal about like I'm consistently in like this fight or flight or something, um, mm -hmm. which we, again, we've talked about all of these little pieces, but um, bringing it down to a conversation of feeling overwhelmed. It's like maybe my, my body itself, like my nervous system, all those things probably dysregulated, probably just always kind of just like ready to turn up um, because it's quite frankly, like overwhelmed most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um so, yeah, you could be chronically overwhelmed if that's how life kind of is for you, minus the dread. I don't really have dread, but the rest of that is pretty much true for me. I was about to say, I ha it's, con it's a conscious thing for me to make sure I'm not rushing through things. Like, mm -hmm. I will be mad early to something, and now I'm like, okay, running around my house, like, dropping mm -hmm. shit. Like, it's like, girl, calm down. Like, what, what is that serious? Yeah. So that's huge for me. For me, that looks like, um, I just noticed today, like, I have a cut on my arm right here. I have a cut on my leg down here, and I was like, I don't know where I got it. I don't know how what happened, but, like, I'd be doing too much. And I uh, I want to say I just realized I was clumsy, but, like, everybody recently has, like, consistently caused me out. And, like, literally every time they see me, like, being Lex, like, I'm dropping stuff or knocking something over. And, like, they kind of expect for me to, like, fumble up. And I'm like, dang, like, what is this? And I'm like, you need to slow down. Like, you're just doing too much. Um, so that's what I think about the rushing through things. Yeah, I think it's also important that we talk about that as, I think that you can also be overwhelmed by good things. So mm -hmm. it's not just like you bad sure things. Um, and this is because I'm a cry baby. Like I love crying and it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. But like I will cry about books and movies and like even just being so grateful. Like actually today when I was teaching yoga during the mm -hmm. meditation, I was like, I am so grateful right now. Like I had little tears. Like I am just so overwhelmed by the awe in this moment. Or like even like looking at my friends sometimes when we're hanging out or doing stuff or someone's cooking for me and I'm just like tears like so I'm so grateful mm -hmm. I've definitely had times as a kid where um like birthday parties or any place where you get like a lot of like positive attention or something like that it feels overwhelming to me um do you think that that's um I don't I don't think that that's necessarily negative to be overwhelmed by good things but it is a sign of 
like you still you need to release more probably yeah still need um, to regulate yeah and that you're still not necessarily regulated for me i know like good things are excuse me just as well maybe not just as overwhelming but can be very overwhelming because you're not allowing those things to kind of flow through either so um it's like a little blockage probably right where it's like either way good or bad when you're blocked up like it's easy for you to get overwhelmed I was having a conversation with a friend and he said a quote that's like kind of stuck with me. It was like, you know, emotions take 90 seconds to process through our bodies. If we let them flow, mm-hmm. everything else is self and self inflicted. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're if you think about that, it. yeah, you're just like holding on to it or not letting it pass through. And so if you really think about even like big emotions, like good ones, bad ones, whatever, <laughs> like 90 seconds, if you like feel it, you acknowledge it, you let it flow through your body and then it can kind of be done. It processes. But a lot of times we block them and then we get stuck in these emotions and all that self-inflicted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so what would you say is wrong with feeling overwhelmed? Like, so should we be trying to not be overwhelmed and, and like why we should absolutely be trying to not be overwhelmed. Oh. And what I mean is like, <laughs> learning how to regulate things in our Mm -hmm. lives. And I only say that because like when you're overwhelmed, you're not functioning at your highest. Like your brain Mm -hmm. literally can't operate. You become clumsy. You start making mistakes. Your immune system lowers. Mm -hmm. Like it affects your actions. Like you start um, reacting and like lashing out to people. Like when you're overwhelmed, it's because your body is not regulated and therefore you're lashing out and, and doing just a bunch of things that aren't in alignment. And so I think that it behoove, it would behoove us to, you know, learn how to better process all those things so that we can be ourselves, like our authentic selves more of the time. Okay, that makes complete sense because we did just spend the last 20 minutes talking about like all these issues and things from being overwhelmed. Um, But also within your body, cortisol surges through your body um, and that can leave you feeling a lot of anxiety and emotions as well. And at the same time, your serotonin um, starts to get stored. And so you also have... Um, less of like chemicals that help fight you feeling anxious or depressed and sad, things like that. So like your body is literally in a state that is not helpful for you. Um, and I think you probably said it best with just the fact that it's like, you're not your best self. Like when I'm overwhelmed, I am laying on the sofa or I'm, um, looking for something to drink or, you know, you might uh, go to bad habits or you might be start procrastinating. You might be feeling like giving up, blah, 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 blah. And all the other things we've said. And so, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. It's like, you're just not at your best self right now because when you are at your best self, you're like, you're feeling, you know, confident, you're getting things done. Um, You're not really feeling worried, et cetera. And vanity metrics, whenever your cortisol is off in your body, you gain weight. It makes it really hard to lose weight. So, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We, we think that, you know, these things are all separated, but they are all so very much intertwined. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with screen time and how easily accessible bad news is and stuff, we also can get caught up in those cycles and be overwhelmed by external things. Yeah, that's good. I can see that. Yeah. So you have to think about it. Um, when we talk about being overwhelmed, do you think that some people are more easily overwhelmed than others? And if so, like what would be factors or things that do that? Because I know some people are like, I, I have a person have in my be. life who is so overwhelmed all the time about every little thing that happens. Mm-hmm. And I know some people who be chilling and it's like crazy stuff happening. Like my best friend, Kim, bro, mm-hmm. her... Her grandmother's already passed, so it's not that. But Laura, rest in peace. If her grandmother passed, if she got into a car accident, if whatever happened, she would be chill. Like, mm-hmm. does not get o- at least visibly overwhelmed, right? Like, she just doesn't do that. But then I also know people who, like, they spill some water and all of a sudden it's a meltdown. But are, is the person who just spills the water and had the meltdown, are they over? Are they really overwhelmed or are they actually, like, letting the emotions go more quickly? than the person who seems chill because I, I just said I was chronically overwhelmed and yet there's literally nothing that I'm like really worried about. Like my therapist tells me all the time, like she's like, yeah, you always say that you're, that you're fine. Um, and because I know, like I, I legitly always know like, Oh, things are going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Like, isn't, I'm not actually really worried. And yet my body will tells me when I'm stressed and my body shows me when I'm overwhelmed, et cetera. Um, but I, I do think that there are people who are, are more sensitive and who, but I, what I wonder, I guess, is that outward 
you know, showing of this versus like what's really going on in your body. Mm. Who might actually really be more overwhelmed? Do you know? Do you kind of yeah, know yeah, no, that's true. But just because they're not showing visibly on the outside, and as, like as that I was might talking be better to it, live like that. Like yeah, ah, well, what, what happened? So, and like let it go. Well, so so I'll say so. Kim and I are polar opposites. So. I am the reactive person. I'm a very sensitive person. Like things like I, I do have a lot of tools in my toolkit to help me regulate my emotions, but I feel them very deeply. And a lot of times out loud, like mm-hmm. people can see when I'm distressed her, not so much, but she does, she does process. And so what I'll say is I think that it's healthy to feel it and possibly have a visual reaction, but whenever it's longer than 90 seconds, whenever it be, ruins your day, whenever it becomes mm-hmm. a pattern and a habit, that's when it's chronic overwhelm and like very problematic for your mm-hmm. immune system. Um, so I think, you know, you can process it out loud. You can process it internal depending on who you are and how you process things. But I think any time that it lingers and starts to affect the rest of your day or keeps you from doing the things that you need to do, like mm-hmm. that's a sign that it's like overwhelming, mm-hmm. and not the healthy processing of emotion. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. And I will say, going back to um, your question, that <clears throat> I do think that there is there are certain things and experiences um for certain folks that does make them more likely to be in a state of overwhelm or chronically overwhelmed or um, to deal with stress and overwhelm in a certain way. Um, And so to that, for sure, it's always, you know, growing up is a huge part of this. So having reactive parents um, can condition you over time to be easily overwhelmed. And that conditions essentially um, your nervous system is dysregulated because you're always like walking on eggshells. You don't know if or when they might like go off or, not approve of something or uh, whatever. And again, that it doesn't even have to be like abusive yelling at you, all that, although those things of course do contribute. Um, but just even, I think our, uh, our generation kind of has more like authoritative, authoritarian mm-hmm. parents or um, guardians. Um, and so it's more of like a, you know, because I said so, or you need your respect or blah, blah, blah. Like you, we didn't have as much voice. I don't think as I see a lot of, um, newer parents starting to demonstrate um, with their children. And so things like that can cause you to have not known how to process well. And you're hyper vigilant to like pay attention to like how people accept what you say and what, you know, what are they thinking? And, and all of that again leads to less like you needing more and more, um, you kind of being more reactive to the things around you. And I think that the hyper vigilance um, and recognizing that is so important because like really traumatic childhoods, like, and it doesn't have to be any other person's version of trauma. Like whatever was trauma for you does cause a level of PTSD in the way your brain mm-hmm. develops. And so going into that part, cause y'all know I love neuroscience. And if you don't, now you do. Um, it affects the way that your prefrontal cortex develops in your brain. So like we're not adults until like our brain doesn't really harden up until like the mid twenties, like 23 to 25, I think, depending on the person. And that's like the cognitive center that helps you make all your decisions. And so when you grow up around, you know, um, um, authoritarian parents, whenever you're walking on eggshells or think you have to appear a certain way, you become so hyper vigilant that you're more prone to that fight or flight. And so that kind of your brain builds that muscle up as you're getting older. So think mm-hmm. about like if you just doing bicep curls all day, you can be walking around here like Popeye. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing in our brains. The good news is you can rewrite those, mm-hmm. but it does take a lot to like rethink and reframe yeah. those neural pathways. And that's why you think like, oh, this is just how I am or I'm, you know, you're, oh, I'm a stronger person or whatever, which you've just. That's just kind of the story of it now. Whereas you could be stronger if you could be more vulnerable, if you um, were able to take off the mask, if you were able to, you know, this or that or whatever, and and let the things flow more through you. I think the other thing that affects us is um, that anxiety and those unhealthy mindsets, like whenever they start to set in and become the narratives that run our lives. Mm -hmm. Like if you always feel like a victim or if people are always picking on you or doing things and that's the lens that through which you see the world, like I think you will be definitely prone. prone to more overwhelm. Like, yeah. absolutely. Like, because everything is a problem. Yeah, everything. Yeah, which it kind of is, but. <laughs> mm. So notice but, I guess, but, but I saw that's like what I don't have, or I don't know if it's anymore, or just don't have, but like, I, I really, I truly do not see that many problems. Like, I, or as soon as I kind of see something, I'm like, okay, this, like, I can very quickly kind of like shift it into something. I just have so many of them, them still that it's like, a lot. Um, but I can see how that could be, uh, make somebody more prone to, to always just, just feel overwhelmed or to feel overwhelmed more quickly. Um, because it's like, they don't like me. This is like me. That's against me. This is against me. And it's like, why would you not be always on guard if that was the type of world that you lived in? Yeah. Like it makes sense. 
But I think that that's where it starts, right? Like whenever you do catch yourself feeling overwhelmed, like um, I think it's like further down the line that you're really able to sit with your assumptions and narratives and actually like process that with a therapist and someone who can help you. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, once you're aware of your patterns, then you can kind of start to address them. Mm -hmm. And I think in those moments where you can recognize that you're feeling overwhelmed or that you're in that state, um, that the things that you can do there are similar to like what we've said in a lot of different instances, right? Mindfulness, um, meditation, slow your breathing down to start breathing. Um, I, I do that a lot actually now where I'll just like, just start like breathing slow. And even when, um, um, I was, I wasn't really babysitting. I was playing with um, my friend's two year old and we were playing, she was running around, and um, I think she was feeling like, she was actually kind of stressed out. I don't forget what she had did, and I was like, well, let's just breathe, and then we sat there, and she did her little deep breaths because she was copying me, and I was like, I was like, yeah, this is going to be easy. Um, but, yeah, that's a big thing is, like, that movement, um, slow down, like, however you can slow yourself down in that moment. Yep, and then this is for, like, in the moment when you find yourself, like, just very overwhelmed. Um, it's called, like, present moment exercises and it's anything you can do to get your body to recognize that it's safe in this present moment because that's whenever your brain starts like spiraling and you're like overwhelmed and I can't do this and now this is happening and then you're really just not present so all of that to say if you ever find yourself really like spiraling out of control if you start like looking at things in front of you like naming colors like oh a white lamp a green plant brown car you know this like telling your brain that like, okay, I'm safe. Like, look where we are physically, like stop spiraling and take a moment here. Or you can start counting things in front of you. But I learned that at USC through their USC mindfulness program. And I was like, wow, that's so helpful to learn like little tricks to help you get your mm -hmm. body back into the present moment when your brain is kind of going crazy. Mm -hmm. That is a really good trick to use. Um, overwhelm is a lot of times because there's so much to do. And so um, I know when, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, a lot of times, a lot, but a lot of people do this too. You probably do this too. It's like, I'll be like, okay, I have to clean up first. And so like, before I can start working, like I got clean, I'll clean up my room and, or like the next thing is like making lists. Like sometimes just getting it all out of your head. So like I can make a list, a to-do list that has like literally like 50 things on it. No, you're not going to do all that. But I think it's helpful to make your list. And then it's like, all right, what things am I going to do today? And like, just take out a couple of things or just, you know, start pulling out one thing. Like what am I about to start doing? Mm -hmm. um, and just getting started. So like making lists, getting it out of your head, um, just being able to look and see like all the things that you want to do, um, keeping your space organized, organizing your to-dos and all of that stuff. Um, helps kind of like get you into a clear space, I think, to um, now just focus in on whatever task at hand. And then doing small things can help to start build momentum. Um, something else to think about is maybe delegating tasks or asking for help with things. Like if you have a partner and you were supposed to cook dinner, but you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe you ask them to do it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just order food so you don't have to worry about it. Like thinking about so what are those things on your plate you can take off so that you can just focus on the task at hand. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, talking through it, um, calling a friend or setting a therapy appointment, uh, speaking to somebody about like your, how you're feeling overwhelmed right now is a, a good way to a lot of times maybe just hear yourself um, and for somebody else to be able to kind of be there with you, offer whatever you know they can, insight, different perspective, et cetera, can be helpful. And again, I think a big thing about overwhelm is just like you're just full. So just to get it out, I think it's helpful. Um, all this is kind of about, like, how do we, like, process through it? Mm -hmm. All of those are important whenever you're feeling overwhelmed. Um, but here are some ways that we can actually prevent feeling overwhelmed. And so the biggest one is Which to... Which I think is most important. Exactly. Um, to, pre to try to prevent it because, like I said, like, all these symptoms I've had in the past or I can think about now that I don't have anymore, like, oh, I can't even imagine, like... What else could there be? I could actually maybe feel totally different than I do right now, and I think I'm, like, kind of good. Um, so to do these preventative things will help you to be in a space where you're not so often in, like, fight or flight in the first place. Mm -hmm. And most foundationally, the first one is to take care of yourself, like, physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, like, getting sleep, movement, eating and nutritious, healthy foods, mm -hmm. like, making sure that you're taking care of that first. Mm -hmm, for sure. And um, our read in a lot of places like getting more sleep is huge because it's literally the time that your brain is like regenerating your brain is like catching up your brain is like taking care of itself um during that time um if you're not gonna do anything like try to get more sleep um i think that's very very important and and i think sleep and nutrition 
um, are huge factors. Yes, I'll do that. Um, we've talked about the importance of sunshine, so making sure you're getting a little bit of sun, that always helps improve your mood. Um, and when you're taking care of yourself, then you can start to practice self-compassion, which Lexi mentioned earlier. Like, she noticed that she was shutting down and wasn't going to get it done. I was like, okay, well, here's what I can do right now. Here's, you know, how I can move forward and practicing patience with yourself in those moments. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also you can build up resilience. Um, so building up resilience with things that we've talked about before, like taking cold showers or, um, practicing something, taking on habits. Um, I took on tennis probably cause I just wanted something new to like try to learn and to be able to focus on that wasn't, um, and th it's weird because while that's like an additional thing, right. I keep adding additional things to my life, mostly in the form of like fitness lately. And yet it's because it's a good, like, release and not something that's like a lot of pressure on per se um but practice pushing yourself out of your comfort zone um and that's very helpful in like getting you just used to things happening and that's probably why I don't I feel like oh I'm not overwhelmed or like like how I'm always like yeah I am always fine because I'm I think I'm so used to stuff like I've always just like worked for myself always had stuff going on right there's always something crazy and I'm just used to that and so while the key is, to life, I would say for me, is to not want to be used to that or to not, like, um, glorify that per se, like, glorify struggle or I'm good at solving stuff, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's cool, but also that is good in the sense that um, I don't often feel like something's, like, really going to take me out for real. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest signs of overwhelm are, are things that we can't control, like a life situation happens, a financial situation, a relationship breaks up, like something that you weren't expecting. And so – to help yourself prepare, like it's important to build up that resilience, but also you can practice having a plan or a practice, mm -hmm. like whenever things do get overwhelming, like what can I do that makes me feel better? Is it calling my therapist? Is it, you know, cooking, if that helps you relax? Is it whatever you need to do? But like thinking through those things that help you de-escalate those things that help you focus like like you said like write a to-do list like if you know that that helps you write that down so when you mm -hmm. find yourself in those moments you're not like grasping for straws you're mm -hmm. like oh no I know these five things help me I'm gonna go for a walk I'm gonna go get something to eat I'm gonna get me a caffeine free tea I'm gonna take a nap I'm gonna do this and you're like you know that those are the things mm -hmm. that work yeah I do know what those things are for me actually um that I think about it too because there's always like the just what do you go to during those times? Um, and I think in general, like, we have such a hustle culture. Um, that plus, there's a, a lot of survival that's necessary right now. Like, a lot of people are, you know, there's a lot of inflation. We just came through slash. I just saw another um, strain of COVID coming out um, with the pandemic. And there's just, like, there's so much going on, right? So it may seem like, okay, like, this is just life, like, we are overwhelmed, and that's just what it is, um, and that's how life looks, this is, this is it, but you definitely have a choice, um, and I think it's all about just, like, really noticing how you feel, like, really paying attention to how you feel, um, stopping, and, and trying to react less, um, and if you're in a state of constant overwhelm, like, how can you chip away at that, how can you bring yourself to a more, like, constant peaceful state um and all of these things have a huge impact on our lives in the long run and and hi he um i mean it really is your health like being stressed forever is is what gets people like it really does chip at your immune system and all of the things i think carly said all this earlier um but it may feel while you're a little bit younger like okay cool but as you get older and older like the stress has like really chipped away and like you re it really does put you at uh, in a less healthy place. Mm -hmm. And so I think one thing I'll add mm -hmm. is do things every day that, like, bring you peace or joy because that's part of you owning that, like, life doesn't have to look like this. You don't have to be stressed out. You don't always have to be burning the candle from both ends. And I think that that's helpful is, like, when you start practicing doing those things that fill your cup, that bring you joy, that bring you peace, and that help you feel better about who and where you are. Yeah, so hit us up this week. Let us know how you feel about overwhelm. Um, after listening to this, do you feel like maybe you are in a constant state of chronic overwhelm? Do you feel like this is not something you really deal with? I'm interested to see how you feel about it and how you deal with it. At Carly's Couch on all the platforms. And if you have ways to deal with it that we didn't say, hit us up. Let us know so we can share it with everyone else. Um, this week's shout out is Stevie Johnson and the Fire and Little Africa crew. They were on episode where we talked about them in episode 82. 
But it's about Black Wall Street. Um, it was the commem commemorative of the 100 years of the Tulsa Race Massacre. And they actually did like a Dreamville collaboration and had all these Tulsa artists come into Tulsa, record an album. Um, and there's actually a documentary being produced by OWN. And they just cool. did their first live um production of this album at Harvard on campus. Shout out to Dr. Stevie Johnson. He's the Nasir Jones Fellowship. Um, and he flew like over 50 people out to Harvard to do this live production. Um, so Ooh. they got a lot of cool stuff dropping. Um, you can check them out on episode 82 and all the stuff that they're doing in at fireandlittleafrica.com. Cool. And as usual, we have a question of the week. Oh, this one's mad easy for me. No, um, you can go ahead and go first then. <laughs> you don't know? Oh, psh. Yeah. well, uh, you ask me then. Okay. Because <laughs> that's easy. So what's the biggest mistake at work that you have ever made? Um, one of the biggest mistakes at work that I've ever made is, and and actually, you know, I take responsibility for it because I always take responsibility for bad things that happen in my company. Um, but the biggest mistake I made was uh, killing off somebody via social media. This is not funny, um, but it, it was messed up. Um and it was somebody of importance to one of the organizations that was a client of ours. And they sent us, you know, they'd already made it in memor memoriam uh, type of video and some content, you know, to have it uh, for when the moment came. And we missed a word that was like in preparation and was like, oh, well, let's get this out. And definitely put out that like rest in peace to this lady. And it was not good. It was only out there for like 20 minutes. One of them was out for 20 minutes. Another one was out for like an hour. But it did some pretty pretty uh, egregious damage as far as people being like, um, you can imagine that, right? Like if, if you saw that somebody you knew or um, somebody in your family had passed away and they haven't. Mm -hmm. and, and also the thought of like, that's kind of icky to think about. Like you already have this stuff made, which it's just, that's just part of like the time we live in also um, to be prepared for those things. But yeah, that was a pretty big mistake. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was yeah, real that's, bad. Whew, that's a lot. Um, I messed up on a contract whenever I was working um, as an engineer. I messed up on a contract, but um, you know, it was only he said it's in the tens of thousands, and that's okay. But anything more would have been a bigger issue. Mm -hmm. But it was my first year. Um, I did that, but then I also think about what was there to mess up though in the contract. Um, like I messed up on their scope. Oh, and so like. What got sent to the architect wasn't what it was supposed to be, um, and so they had missed out on money. So they had to go back and amend it. It's not like I messed up like an actual building thing, so that was okay. But then the other big one I can think about is whenever I used to be a stadium, like I used to work in the suites during football games at OU, and um, that's like the people who pay the really big bucks. Like, and in any ways, they had this very big, beautiful crystal bowl. I was watching it. I dropped mm. that bitch, and that hole shattered everywhere. Yeah, that's just embarrassing. And I was like, <laughs> God. I just remember my face. Like, I was embarrassed. You can't do nothing. And I was, there's always glass in this little sink. And everybody's looking at you and you looking at them. And, yeah, just embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Um, so what's the biggest mistake at work you've ever made? And um, hopefully looking back at it, you can laugh at it or have learned from it. Um, I definitely did. And that's all we got for y'all this week. Thank you for listening, as always. And we appreciate you. See y'all next week.